please introduce yourself. Thank you, uh, commissioners, for inviting me to speak today as part of the uh, environmental panel. Um, my name is Lee Wilbanks. I'm the Upper St. Lawrence River Keeper and the Executive Director of Save the River. Uh, I'd like to point out our organization was founded 35 years ago, and we are still the only organization with the singular focus of preserving and protecting uh, the ecological integrity of the Upper St. Lawrence River. Uh, we work to accomplish that mission through research, education, and advocacy. Uh, as the river keeper, we strive to assure that the Upper St. Lawrence remains swimmable, fishable, and drinkable. In short, we work every day to help keep that body of water, a truly shared water body in every sense of the phrase, usable by the greatest range of compatible interests that we can. I'm here representing our almost 4,000 members and followers to answer the questions you posed in your invitation to me, but I'm also here to express Save the River's unambiguous support for Plan 2014. We've all been here before. <clears throat> At the initiation of the process to review the impacts of the current plan, then to support B+, last year to support BV7, um, and now here today. We've given this task our all as an organization and supported each plan in succession, not because the previous plans or 2014 are the perfect plan for regulating water levels on the lake and river, but because they are so far superior to what we have had for the last 50 years and because we know that every year, and excuse me, I have to say, you delay the return to more natural levels and flows our rivers suffers more and greater damage. And when our river suffers, so do the species and the people who depend on it. Because this has been a decades plus long process, almost everything to be said has been said, multiple times in multiple forums. The science of wetlands restoration presented during the five year study period and reviewed since has not changed. And to a large extent, Neither have the inaccuracies and misstatements used to attack this plan or any plan. I don't think it is productive for me to rehash, so I'll try to be brief. In preparation for today, I reviewed the original invitation to this hearing, and it, the slide that was up had the original three questions. Uh, I will try to answer them as best I can. The first was, what specific changes in environmental conditions do you expect would result from the proposed regulation plan? First, I think it's appropriate that I make a general statement, and I'm going to paraphrase from our friends at the Nature Conservancy. Plan 1958 DD has reduced the range of water levels to the point of causing extensive damage to coastal wetlands to the detriment of many key species dependent on the health of those wetlands and by extension to the detriment of the economy and people who depend on them. Plan 2014 will restore these benefits enhance the resiliency of the shoreline in a changing climate, increase water quality and flood protection, and provide greater economic opportunities for all people in the region. What we are fairly certain will not change, nature will remain variable and may well continue the recent trend to greater variability with more intense storm events and more extreme swings in precipitation. We also believe that man-made structures built in proximity to this large, complex, and dynamic water body will continue to be impacted by those fluctuations and natural events in the system regardless of plan. What we believe will change, and I will tell you here, I'm very pleased to be supported and surrounded by the experts, so I will just in many ways skim through their, their testimony. The wet meadow, which has suffered a dramatic 50% reduction under 1958 DD, will rebound by at least 40%, improving water quality and enhancing coastal resiliency. Numerous key species, all, all profoundly negatively affected under 1958 DD, will see significant increases in their numbers. Among them, northern pike by 40%, black tern by 19%, and yes, and I'm glad I wasn't the first one to mention it, the muskrat by 259%. We also believe there will be restoration of natural barrier structures during periods of low supplies and lower levels. 
I do have to say, have an aside about the lily muskrat, which has become the poster child for the foolishness of environmentalists like myself who focus on an unattractive species to the presumed exclusion of our fellow man, or in this case, our fellow man's waterfront homes. Uh, I imagine the canary in the coal mine was treated with disdain until his condition changed dramatically for the worse. Uh, another measure, you, the, the other question you ask was, what measures, I would like to get it correct, what measures other than a new regulation plan could be pursued to restore coastal wetlands and how effective are those measures? Um, I believe we've all done the survey. There have been efforts throughout the basin to use mechanical means to clear cattail choked wetlands and return at least a portion of them to wet meadow. These are, have proven expensive, complicated, having to be undertaken in carefully modern times and conditions, lest they negatively impact other uh, factors on the land. Uh, the mechanical restoration of 64,000 acres of wetlands to meadow marsh will be both expensive and time consuming in an era of constrained financial resources. Again, TNC is current conservatively, we believe on the low side, estimated the cost of restoring the estimated 34,000 acres of impacted wetlands on the US side at $17.4 million. Uh, we believe that's something that plan 2014 can accomplish for free. Uh, we did do a project last year where we took seventh graders into a wetland and they pulled for the better part of a day. Uh, we don't think that's a productive use of their time. Uh, the last question you asked was, does the proposed adaptive management strategy focus on the right monitoring priorities? Um, our answer to that is yes. Uh, if I have a little time left, I'll say that from re my reading of the proposal set out in plan 2014, uh, we believe the adaptive management plan will do what 1958 never could. And that's one of the reasons text. It will take advantage of future scientific and management advances to assure that the impacts of regulation are those which have been calculated and to adjust for any possible long-term changes in the amount of water entering the system clearly something we have to face. Um, I will say that we, will, we are concerned about funding and coordination, and we intend to stay vigilant and outspoken about the need to make certain that any adaptive management plan performs as expected. I guess perhaps all of this is why Plan 2014 enjoys broad support, we believe, throughout New York State. It's had almost 10,000 expressions of support, many of those from the Lake Ontario region. The support of 42 environmental conservation, environmental conservation and sportsman organizations, 35 business, in, including the New York State Business Council, including in our area, numerous towns, villages, and county governments. In the river region, our economy is directly tied to our environment and recreational opportunities it provides. This plan will provide, will provide both, improve both. Plan 2014 was formulated over the course of 10 years with the input of more than 180 stakeholder representatives, experts, and scientists from government agencies, academia, NGOs, and industry in New York, Ontario, and Quebec. A diverse coalition strongly supports 2014 as it will increase the overall health of coastal habitats, the species they serve, and provide greater economic opportunities for the people who depend on them. They have joined with us who live, work, and play, visit and love the river, and believe it can be restored, and believe that you, the IJC, can't give up now. Because all of us, even those of us who don't own a piece of the shoreline, have a place on the water. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Wilbanks. Thank you very much. Agree on anything, as as Miss um, Bonanno sa said. You know, we don't seem to be able to agree. I would hope that you could agree to work together to try and gain more resources. I am a former legislator. There are other former people here. The easiest way for a, for for a unit of government is to say no, is to have contesting voices coming at them. Oh, don't spend it on this. Oh, do spend it on that. 
the hardest thing to say no to as, as, as a sitting legislator is an expenditure where you get a unified request from unlikely allies for a better investment in something. So you may come at it for different reasons because some groups are primarily concerned about environmental protection and some primarily concerned about property protection. Insofar as people can see their way clear to talk to those that they don't think they like at all, um, you've got a better everybody's got a better chance of winning. And that's true no matter what the IJC decides. Um, so sometimes we have to swallow it and just do it for something we believe in. Yes, sir. I, I, I guess I would like to say, and maybe I'm just speaking for our organization, uh, I don't believe we could agree with you more. Um, I would like to point out that um, in many respects from our perspective, uh, and we, I have personal experience in the legislature and, and understand the process, um, the other perspective sometimes is that you don't want to play poker against yourself, um, and we've tried. And I think your experience uh, through the iterations of the plan may be that every time you've responded to those who have complained the loudest and attempted to accommodate those interests, the marker has moved and the answer has been no. Um, and, and so we have a certain frustration because we do hear the idea that we should compromise. And when I look at the benefits that were proposed under B plus for the interest I represent, and I look at the change in those benefits under plan 2014, I would tell you we have compromised. Um, we have been at meetings throughout New York State where we have said words that I'm not proud to say, where the shore has been hardened and it needs to be reinforced or repaired, it should be reinforced and repaired. That's not a position I would normally want to take because we're not all about shore hardening. When ports need to be dredged, they need to be dredged. Many of the things that we are willing to work on, uh, we believe the other side should be willing to say that's great and work with us. And so we think we've tried. We appreciate 100% what you've said. Uh, we wish the process were one where those kind of dialogues were productive and not just uh, an exercise. Thank you.